Alrighty, well, good afternoon and welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Andrew Daphne. I'm the Instruction and Outreach Librarian at the New Jersey State Library. And it is my pleasure to present our speaker today, Mark Brownstein from Emerald Medicare. Um, Mark is the Director of Medicare and Risk Management for Emerald Medicare. He is a trusted, independent, and dedicated provider of comprehensive and competitive Medicare solutions. Mark has extensive experience working with individuals, CPAs, tax professionals, and financial planners implementing Medicare solutions to meet clients' needs. His passion is working with seniors by providing insight and education on a topic that has value and is valued. So thank you, Mark, for, for agreeing to speak to us today. Um, we look forward to, to learning more about the, the dental aspect of, of, of Medicare and the Medicare um, Advantage plans. Um, before we jump into the presentation, uh, we have a few uh, housekeeping items to go over. Uh, first and foremost, we will be taking your questions at the end of the program, but please feel free to submit them at any time using the Q&A or the chat feature um, in the Zoom dashboard. Uh, there is a survey that will be available after the program. If you have time, we ask you please complete the survey. Um, we always love hearing your feedback. Um, and if you're looking for more information on Medicare coverage options, um, you can visit the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services at the web address on the screen there. Um, I will send that out in the chat uh, once we get underway so that you have a live link to that. And the last thing I want to go over is just a brief overview of the Zoom dashboard. Uh, this is what your dashboard should look like if you're using a PC or a Mac. Um, if you're using a mobile device, the dashboard may look a little bit different, but all of the features will still be there. Um, in the bottom uh, left-hand side, you will see your audio settings. If you have an external audio device, you can check to make sure that it is correctly uh, selected there. If you have any problems throughout the previous uh, or throughout this entire presentation, you can hit this raise hand button here. That'll alert me and I will send you a message in Zoom and hopefully be able to resolve any of those issues. And as I mentioned, if you have a question, there's the Q&A or the chat buttons. You can use either of them to send your questions to us. And again, we'll be happy to, to address them at the end of Mark's presentation. So that is everything that I have for you. So it's my pleasure to turn it over to Mark now. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. Let me just get up on this screen, um, my PowerPoint. Um, and Andrew, you can see one screen, is that correct? Uh, two screens. You can see two, okay. Let me change that then. Hold on, sorry, folks. You can see one screen now? Yes. Okay, great. Hello, everybody. Again, sorry for technology um, at its best and its worst. So again, Mark Brownstein here with Emerald Medicare. Um, I service most extensively New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, though I do uh, cover 17 other states around the country. Um, I have a staff of five people um, that support me. We have about 1,100 clients. So we know very clearly that this dental component is so important. Um, I can tell you that 80% of all of my calls um, or conversations with people in any way include some form of dental or honestly eyeglass care. And dental is really quite honestly poorly handled within the world of Medicare, whether it's an advantage plan or a supplement plan, in some cases plans that you may have through the state um, or through other access points. So I'm gonna cover this in as much detail um, as I can. Um, it's a pretty comprehensive webinar. Again, we, we know the importance of it, and um, I just want to be able to um, explain it um, as um, I've laid it out here. So people are certainly confused about dental coverage. They're confused. They want it. They need it. Um, they get it offered, and it never really covers what they want. Um, and it is important for some and very, very important for others. 
um, again, people who have had a career of needing, a lifetime of needing dental care know very well how much it's cost. On the other hand, people who have been lucky enough to just need cleanings all their lives um, don't yet maybe know what uh, the potential uh, cost might be. So though it is true that, you know, there's lots of things that concern people financially, dental cost is certainly one of them, and it is growing. It's a concern for people 65 and over. Um, and so it's a very important subject. But dental is different for everyone. I mean, Medicare open enrollment, as many of you know, ends December 7th. But that ends for just a small population of people that um, really um, has a date designed to, through the TV and through your mailbox, encourage you to make a decision by December 7th. Well, some of the plans that I'll be talking about don't have a deadline of December 7th because it is a standalone dental plan. If you're on an advantage plan of some sort, um, then yes, that is a December 7th deadline. Um, in many cases, you have 30 days after you sign up for an advantage plan to make a decision on the dental piece. But navigating dental and retirement is really what this is about because people who are working often have dental coverage. Maybe they use it, maybe they don't. Maybe they pay a small portion of it and maybe they don't. Um, but in retirement, when the company is no longer covering it, um, it becomes important. But you have a dentist. Most people do. And the question is always, are you loyal to your dentist? Um, do you really like your dentist? And that is so important to you. You wouldn't change dentists for any reason. So, you know, does the dentist take any coverage? Does he just want to have you sort of pay while you're there and give you a discount? Um, and so many of these plans have an all year enrollment option. Um, but also COBRA for people who are leaving their employment is often an option as a transition to have the dental coverage that you were used to um, and continue it for either 18 months or three years, depending on if you're the employee or the spouse. But there's a cost to that. You're paying full boat. So maybe your company was paying for it uh, partially when you were working, but when you're on COBRA, you're paying whatever the cost is to whatever the carrier it is. And that's something that you have to compare to other options. So the premiums and the benefits vary tremendously. Um, there are dollar limits. Could be 500, could be 1,000, 1,500, 3,000, 5,000. That's just the out-of-pocket um, contribution that they can contribute to. Um, and so your usage, my usage is overall dental needs vary tremendously, as I said earlier. And that's what really people have to look at. Very often people, oh, I just need a cleaning. I'm willing to pay for it. And other people go, I need a lot of dental care and I need to make sure that I can at least get a little bit of help for dental care. So there are standalone plans, as I've mentioned, and then there are some connected to Med Advantage plans. These are Part C and Part D plans um, that are very much promoted, encouraged. The government likes you to be on an Advantage plan and the dental options vary tremendously. And often you're in a network um, of their dental providers and that may or may not be acceptable to you. Those folks who are on Medicaid certainly have other options and often don't pay very much for dental care, um, but they do have their own sets of options. Medicare is considering changes for dental coverage. 2020 something, I don't know the answer to that. I can tell you that the conversation has been, if Medicare were to include just cleanings and x-rays into everyone's Part B, which you pay for, the potential increase in Part B premium would about be about $15 per person per month. So that's just something to keep in mind and think about. So there are some myths around dental coverage. Um, so again, it's the same for everyone and it's different for everyone. Myth number one, Medicare covers all your dental expenses. Clearly not true. You can change your MedAdvantage dental plan at any time. Not true either. Um, there are times of the year, including up till December 7th and maybe a month after January 1st, but that's about it. Maybe there's one carrier that you can actually add it on during the year. Dental costs are the same for everyone. We certainly know that that's not true. Medicare and Medicaid handle dental the same. They do not. Medicaid uh, pays for a lot more of the dental care, but the limited number of dentists that accept Medicaid. 
The Advantage plans and the Supplement plans have the same dental options. They are vastly different because MedAdvantage have it incorporated as part of the package. And in supplemental plans, just like the prescription drug plan, it's a standalone. Medicare covers all my dentists. Well, I certainly wish that were true and it is not. Um, when, when Medicare does cover dentists, sometimes um, you can go to any dentist and get reimbursed. And sometimes you have to use the dentist within the network. I can't keep my former employer coverage. Well, some cases you can, in some cases you can't. I always encourage people before they leave their employer coverage, dental coverage, to ask if they can keep it. Usually it's a separate line item on one's um, uh, payroll. And uh, if you call the carrier on the back, they may in fact be happy to have you continue at the full cost at maybe the coverage you're used to. So seven things to know about dental coverage. Um, Advantage plans um, do not have the same dental coverage. They're different. Um, as I've said it a few times, some of them are reimbursement. Some of them you have to go to a doctor in a network. Um, and, and some of them are cleanings and some of them go all the way up to comprehensive. The one piece that is often not included is implants, but some standalones do include that. Standalone plans also vary widely on details and cost. And so you have to really look at the dental coverage that you're being offered and look at your needs. Um, but it's okay to ask your dentist for a cash discount. Um, if you say to them, I'm looking at get, getting dental coverage, they go, well, well, let me give you a discount. And that's often what can happen. Um, they don't necessarily want to do the billing for you and they don't want you necessarily to have to go through the effort of getting reimbursed. So dental um, coverages and billings are actually still the wild west. They have a tremendous amount of flexibility on how much they charge. So, you know, negotiate with your, with your dentist, but the dentist can be helpful in controlling expenses. So for instance, if there's a 2022 expense that you might have and you have a deductible and he says, okay, I'll do some in 2022 and some in 2023 to help you control your expenses. Some of it has to do with the way they code their procedures. So there's a lot more flexibility on the dentist's part than one would un uh, believe and understand. But you need to expect to pay out of pocket beyond preventative. Um, I can tell you clearly that no matter what plan you're on, there's sort of a, you know, a zero, 20, and 50%. So maybe preventative, you pay zero, maybe for um, basic coverage, which I'll go over what those are, and you may pay 20%, and maybe for extensive crowns, implants, et cetera, you might pay 50%, but you're going to pay out of pocket beyond preventative. As I said, after leaving a job, you might keep your dental. Um, and also those of you who might have a HSA, which is a health savings account, it can certainly help with your out-of-pocket dental costs. So that's yet another option. So I always like to cover this, folks, is that oral health is really crucial to your health and well-being. Um, and people vary in their opinion on dental and vision as either critical or in some cases, not essential. Again, 80% think it's important. I would say, you know, 20% think it's critical, but there are certainly percentage of people that don't think it's important at all and have never needed it. But research does show that the poor oral health has far reaching implications, you know, with consequences on physical and mental health. Um, and it's true. And I've often heard this from my dentists is dentists are usually among some of the first providers to identify some early stages of some important diseases like diabetes, heart disease, and, and other cancers and dementia. So it's, it's important. And, and according to the Center for Disease Control, one in five adults over 65 have untreated tooth decay and over two thirds have gum disease. So poor oral health can complicate the treatment of some diseases and really lead to some preventable ER visits. Um, infections have been associated with uh, worsening diabetes and increased cardiovascular infections of the mouth. Um, and so dental problems are preventable. And then there's the well being piece. Having a healthy smile can boost your confidence and to show others that you care about yourself and your hygiene. So 
percentage of beneficiaries in original Medicare who did not see a dentist in 2019. And you can see it varies by demographics, by rural and urban, um, and socioeconomic. And so, you know, it's still a high percentage of people who haven't seen a dentist after 65. But you can see it, it does change dramatically based on, um, you know, lifestyle and, and, and income and where, where one lives. So that's, I think, important to know. But original Medicare, again, original Medicare, that's part A and B only. <clears throat> it is not an advantage plan. Does not cover routine dental, comprehensive, basic, doesn't. Routine eye care doesn't cover that either, but it does cover cataract surgery, diabetic eye checkups, and glaucoma. Doesn't cover eyeglasses. Um, hearing aids, right? Long-term care. We, we know this about original Medicare, but certainly the dental piece is what we're speaking of, but I thought I would add these other pieces that original Medicare just doesn't cover. So again, a lot of words on here, but um, original Medicare, except in very limited circumstances, original Medicare doesn't cover any dental, but it does <clears throat> cover for treating jaw fractures, some preparation for radiation, <clears throat> excuse me, for oral cancer, uh, <clears throat> but not routine. The percentage of people that have dental coverage goes down dramatically after, <clears throat> after age 65, after they retire and lose their employer coverage. Among adults 65 and older, the percentage of people without coverage is almost half. So I'm guessing that's not a surprise to some of you. Some of you on this call may not have dental coverage, but for those of you who do, um, you know, value what you have and maybe you can get, get better, but at least you're in the percentage that at least have some. And older adults have more complex oral needs. Um, and if they don't get the care that they need, they, they face some high out-of-pocket costs trying to get the care they need. So having some kind of dental insurance, I feel is important. I have some. I use it, um, which is why I've been passionate about this subject for years now. And each year it's gotten more and more important in this marketplace. Again, one in five older adults polled said they have delayed getting dental care or gone without it in the past two years. The majority said that the cost or lack of coverage played a role in that decision. So this is this is a major issue. And um, I'm I'm clear that this is an important webinar for for so many people. So dental services are expensive. I think we know that. The average person with traditional Medicare who uses services spends about $1,000 a year, and one in 10 spends over $2,000 a year. So that's a, a significant cost, each person. Um, but they're fee-for-service. They have a fee-for-service model. So with a higher proportion of costs that are out of pocket and more financial barriers to getting them, um, because it's not all free, except for cleanings. It's, 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 it's rare that it's free. People do have to come out of pocket. Um, one in five Medicare beneficiaries who used any dental services spent more than $1,000 out of pocket. 11% um, spent 2,000 or more. So that just gives you a sense of how much is being spent when people do wind up going uh, to get dental care at all. So again, dental care is important, uh, but you need to look at the benefits, the summary of benefits or what's called the evidence of coverage to see actually what the plan will cover. Um, you know, people who have used their plan know it. People who haven't used their plan don't really know what's coming um, because they haven't really reviewed the details. So dental plans like medical plans, like advantage plans, they all are a little different and you need to sort of find from the carrier how you can access the summary so that you can understand it. 94% of though of advantage enrollees have access to some dental coverage. So that's a pretty high percentage. That's a high, so that means that advantage plans do and have focused in on dental over the last, I'm gonna say <clears throat> five years. On the other hand, it's not much. 
So 500, 1,000, 1,500, <clears throat> one carrier offers 2,000. Um, and But it's not um, always what people need or they want more. 10% are required to spend money on a separate premium. So these advantage plans have a rider in for some carriers where you can add. One carrier has a $24 rider. You get up to $2,000 worth of services. Is it worth it? I think it is, um, but it depends on how much you use it and whether your doctor is in the network or, or the like. So um, you can get additional benefits with some carriers, but when it comes to dental coverage, my comment is doctors first, prescription medications second, dental benefits third. So if there are some people who dental benefits are more important than doctors and meds, but not very many. So advantage plans, you know, cover often if they cover anything, which is why it's 94%. They cover things like cleanings and x-rays, but that's not quite enough for many. Um, two thirds of the enrollees have access to these exams and don't get billed. So, so therein lies, that's where the marketing is. That's where the focus is, is cleanings and x-rays, right? It's not the rest of the services that are needed. For the comprehensive services, they, as I've said many times here, they pay a larger portion for crowns, dentures, extractions, root canals, all of those things, and the cost varies. The procedure code, of which there's hundreds and hundreds of them, vary in terms of how much you have to come out of pocket for any of these services. Um, some have a $1,000, first $1,000. Some, again, 20 zero, 20, and 50% of out-of-pocket. So, but the most common was 50% for more extensive services. But they range, again, a lot, but from 20 to 70%. So that's a wide range, but something is better than nothing. 25% um, of the people who have Advantage plans have coverage greater than $1,000. So only 25%, which means that 75% have something under $1,000. The the, the uh, Mac coverage maximums average thirteen hundred, and there are higher limits to some of them, but you pay a higher premium. Many Advantage plans are zero premium. Maybe they're thirty dollars. You can pay sixty eighty dollars for an Advantage plan uh, because you're getting better dental, and in some cases you just as well get a standalone plan that you would get an Advantage plan that has some dental benefits. Standalone policies, different. They vary widely. In this case, you can do this any time of the year. So there's no enrollment period like December 7th or a month after um, you get your Advantage plan or make a switch. Um, so that's good for people because after December 7th, you know, we get calls on dental to see if we can help them establish this dental plan for the new year. Uh, but the premium and the benefit coverage and the deductibles and the waiting periods vary across plans, insurance companies, and states. So what one person has in New York could be very different than someone in New Jersey, Connecticut, or Florida, or anywhere else. But these standalone plans for people 65 and older generally cost between, it could be as low as 20, but it could be as high as 85 a month per person. And the annual coverage could go between 1,000 and 5,000. I have not seen higher than 5,000. One in 12, small number, were in a plan that was between two and 5,000. So again, you're hearing it very consistently in this webinar. The numbers are low, uh, uh, below 1,000 often, rare that people have 2,000 to 5,000. The coverage can be often, you know, you pay a deductible and then you pay 20 to 50%, or as in the previous slide, maybe even up to 70%. But as I said on a previous slide, it's important to review the details of the plan you buy or are offered, um, in some cases in a retirement model, uh, what does the coverage really handle? What, what is your out-of-pocket maximum? Um, you know, 1500 is a number that I often see. Uh, there are carriers that have a $1,500 cap. 
uh, but what does it cover and what's your out of pocket? And are you in a network? If you're in a network, you're sticking with the doctor that's in that network. If you stay in a network, you are going to get better pricing. So let's just say a root canal is seven hundred dollars, uh, but the discounted price is five hundred. If you're paying twenty percent of five hundred, it's different than twenty percent of uh, seven hundred. So in some cases, you can go at a network, but you'll pay more, as I said, non-discounted. And so when you go to a network doctor, you're going to get the negotiated rate. Um, but be aware, policies generally don't have pre-existing conditions, but they may require a waiting period before some of these expensive procedures are done. Keep in mind that if, even if you're paying $70 a month for a standalone plan and the first month you say, I need a crown, they have a big risk and then you can cancel your policy three months after the crown is done. So they do often have you know, waiting periods more likely than pre-existing conditions. But there are some plans though that they won't replace a tooth that was missing before you started your coverage. And there are also other dental problems that you may have had before you enrolled that may not be covered. So again, you have to look at the evidence of coverage um, before you can really know what will be covered um, on any of these plans. So I said earlier, your dentist can control your expenses. They can. So before you retire um, and you lose your employer dental coverage completely, talk to your dentist about what is important over the next few years. So you have a sense of it. You have a sense of whether you go on COBRA or how they can sort of help you with the billing issues uh, that you may incur or the out-of-pocket expenses. Um, you know, if you need some expense, expensive services, consider scheduling them while you still have the coverage from your employer. Uh, that could be better than whatever future coverage you may decide to purchase um, once you're no longer with the company. Um, but don't skip preventative dental, such as teeth cleaning because you're worried about the cost. I, I say this from experience, but the short-term savings can lead to health problems later. Um, your dentist, they may also be able to stretch your coverage dollars by spreading out the need uh, within the next calendar year. I've mentioned that as well. And different dental procedures have different costs in different areas. I myself go to a dental college and I get discounted rates plus discounted rates. Uh, not every place has a dental college. They are slower than the average dentist, uh, but they are supervised by some of the best dentists in the area. And um, I often talk about dental colleges because I think that they are a great way to save some money on some important care. Um, also, some dental carriers have a cost estimator. Uh, Delta Dental is one of the carriers that does have a dental estimator. So you can get a range of prices that it should cost you based on what you type in. So for those of you who have a HSA, which is a health savings account, um, that money can be used very nicely for out-of-pocket dental costs. Um, and people have, in some cases, accumulated a lot of money in their HSA, and they use it for copays, they use it for prescription drugs, and they can also use it for dental coverage that you can withdraw any time after even you're no longer able to contribute to your HSA in retirement. Um, but once you, you may not know this, but I think most of you might, is that you can't make new contributions to an HSA after you enroll in Medicare. Uh, that has to stop. But you can withdraw it at any time at any age. Um, if you haven't enrolled in Medicare yet, you can still contribute to an HSA. A common conversation for those people who are looking at keeping their HSA is don't sign up even for Part A. If you have Part A, you cannot be in an HSA. You cannot have yourself or your, uh, or, um, your company contribute to an HSA. But HSAs have a triple break, tax break. Um, it can be taken out of your paycheck pre-tax. Uh, it grows tax deferred. And you can withdraw it tax-free for those expenses that are eligible in any year going forward. So these are just some of the standalone dental carrier options. It's a long list and there are a few others, but I help people with all of these. And all of these are potential options 
all have different plans, different states um, are, all, are all different, but these are some of those standalone plans. So here's just one example. Premium, $34 a month, $50 deductible. The first year you get $500 of coverage. Second year you get $750. The third year you get $1,000. Okay, 114,000 dentists. You know that's that's sort of a great number to see, um, but you know most services, including oral exams, cleanings, and X-rays, are covered at 80%. Um, so these, this is one of the carrier examples. Here's another one: premium 23.99, right? 12.50 annual benefit. Okay, in a calendar year. $50 for preventative, no waiting period. Okay. Routine oral, two per calendar year. Oral exams, one comprehensive, one per three calendar years. And then it goes from there. So again, all of them are just slightly different. So one of the things that we often do for our clients as part of the work that we do every day is we're looking at what dentists are in what carrier um, in a med advantage model. So here we have uh, three dentists and there's three carriers and or four carriers, and some of them are yeses and some of them are noes. But you know that's the work that we do or the work that you need to confirm whether your dentist is covered. Again, getting the discounted rate. This is about getting a discounted rate versus paying a higher price that's not negotiated. You can't see very well what this is, but this is one of the carrier's details on an advantage plan. In the middle, you see dental services. Um, so in the middle, you see zero for preventative. The next one is a thousand dollar maximum, followed by a thousand dollar maximum, zero preventative, two thousand dollars worth of benefits. That's a thirty-five dollar a month premium. So this is you know carrier called Aetna, and so this varies even within. This is within one county. These are five different plans, offering five different versions of dental services. So they're not all the same by any stretch of the imagination. Um, this is very similar in that screen. So this is a stand, This is a writer um, for one of the carriers. And this is actually a $24 writer offering $2,000 of services off of a Med Advantage plan. This includes a vision plan. So the vision plan, uh, I see on the very bottom, will reimburse you up to $200 a year. But the difference between the vision and the dental is $4.90. $5.90, whatever. And so you can see that you get $200 worth of um, eyeglasses, but not, contacts. But the big piece here is the $2,000 worth of dental care after you meet the $50 deductible. And you can see it's zero for preventative and 20 to 50% for comprehensive. If you look on the right side of this chart, it's 30% for preventative if you're out of network and 50 to 70% for comprehensive if you're outside the network. So I've said it a few times, being inside the network, you're going to get discounted prices. And there are plenty of good dentists. Um, but again, there's a lot of dentists in the country. Uh, uh, each of them handle their dental uh, reimbursements or coverage differently. This is another carrier. Okay, here in here down here in the middle sort of is dental. Um, so there's 2,000, 1,500. These two plans are Medicaid plans, the dual access and the dual advantage plans. These are Medicaid, but there's still a limit, 2,000, zero for routine, 2,000 or 1,500 for the, uh, for the care. Um, on a regular plan, it's 750, zero for routine. So again, slightly different. Another carrier, okay, dental benefits, zero for covered network dental, such as x-ray and routine. The next one is 500, right? Um, that's the first 500. So you go to a dentist, any dentist, first 500, you send in the receipt, you get your $500 reimbursed. Anything over 500, you're on your own. So that's the variety within these advantage plans. Um, so again, just to sort of take a, a, a side turn here is, the government has tried to put dental coverage in place. And there is, there's some activity from 2019 and again in 2021. They did pass a bill for dental vision and hearing, but it didn't succeed in the Senate. 
the benefit was predicted to cost 238 billion over the first 10 years. Again, on the average of about $15 a person for just preventative on part B. The current president reconciliation effort of August, 2021 actually was looking to advance oral health as well. So it's, it's on the table, it's on the docket, it's not making great headway, but it is being discussed and each year I see a little bit more of an increase. But to me, the evidence is really clear. Many people with Medicare, they face significant barriers to accessing the dental care they need. Uh, they nearly half, as we talked about, don't have dental coverage and are therefore responsible for the whole cost of their services. As a result, many just don't get their dental care. Uh, about 17 million with traditional Medicare did not see a dentist in the past year. It's a huge number. Uh, being without dental care disproportionately impacts certain demographic groups, including those with low income, but it's still a high percentage of people without any dental coverage. So I've mentioned this a few times. This is the way it breaks down. There's preventative, there's basic, and there's comprehensive or major restorative services. And, and so, so this is what we have here. We have the list here that I think is kind of helpful to see because we all know what dental services can be or what you've paid in the past. But this is a nice sort of overview of how dental services break out um, based on you know, the kind of work that might be needing to be done by any individual. This plan is a standalone plan. This is connected to a Carrington network, to Nationwide, it's called NCD. This is one of the better ones. It's 57 for $1,500 worth of coverage. That could be a little high. Uh, for 3072 but the best value, quite honestly, is the $82 a month for $5,000 worth of coverage. But you can see, as you, if you can look at the screen, that preventative is 100%, no waiting period. Basic is 80% coverage. That means 20% um, out of pocket for you. No waiting period. Major care, 50% on you and 50% paid for, but there's a 12-month waiting period unless you can show proof of prior coverage. So if you're coming off of a COBRA plan or if you have a plan and you want something better, if you can prove you have current coverage, then you can actually have no waiting period for this major care, comprehensive care. It's a nice plan. It's one that I often um, educate people on. So this is just an example of benefit plans um, one and two. You have a $1,000 plan and a $3,000 plan. You can see if you can look at this that you have um, on the right side, you have some basic services that in the first year is covered at 60%, year two is 70, year three is 80. Okay, that's because they wanna get some of your premium dollars, right? Um, and so all of these have a little bit of variety. You don't know what's coming. We don't have a crystal ball. You have to decide how much you want to pay for your premium and how covered you want to be. And, uh, and there are these options of 1,000, 3,000, of which some, of, some things are covered at different levels based on the number of years you've been on the plan. This is another one, emerald, ruby, and diamond, 1,500, 3,000, and 5,000, okay? Um, and so again, based on year one, year two, year three, you can see how it changes. And the monthly rates are on the bottom. It uh, goes from um, you know, 30 for a single member, almost $34 up to $75, right? The diamond plan. So all of these are options that are available in the marketplace as standalone, not connected to Medicare. Medicare, I've talked about, Med Advantage plans are limited and it's based on the plan you're on. So I found this particularly interesting. This is some, you know, Consumer feedback on dental coverage. Um, you know, there people are frustrated that it only covers routine care, but you know, by law, it doesn't need to cover any of that. Um, and though it does cover some restorative procedures, um, most of the plans uh, do not. 
So one of the comments is that that includes dental care, but only with dentists in their network. That was frustrating for people. Of the ones I called, none were accepting new patients. That's kind of frustrating. And it can be the same way with medical coverage. I bought a separate Delta dental plan that says it covers 100% of preventive care, but only up to their maximum. A frustration. Despite the discount the dentist offered, because of the insurance, it does become less expensive to have the insurance than to pay the dentist out of pocket. That's an acknowledgement that it's worth it. Often a dentist will give a discount to seniors with cash. I've said that. All the costs are laid out up front on the carrier's website. Hmm. So you can know what you would have to pay for any dental procedures. Um, yes and no. Versus you never know what the insurance, what the insurance company is going to pay for and not going to pay, even on their website. It's a mystery. So both two perspectives on the same topic. Um, you can still get preventative dentistry for free with the usual limitations on the number of times you're allowed to see the dentist. Usually it's twice a year. Um, if you must pay because you have certain dental issues, um, what you pay is quite reasonable. Again, these are different consumer feedbacks. On MedAdvantage plans, there are no waiting periods. That's important, okay? We talked about waiting periods just moments ago, but men advantage plans, there are no waiting periods. Uh, and the quality of dental care uh, my wife and I have received is sometimes a concern, right? So all of these are, I think, are good feedback. This is a plan that includes vision. So dental and vision are often combined. The vision component could be $150, $200, $250, not a lot. Right, it's for it's for lenses. It's not for the exam itself. Optometry and ophthalmology is part of your medical coverage. What these vision plans talk about is eyeglasses. It talks about contacts. It talks about frames. That's what it you know, whether it be the trifocals or the bifocals. And and yes, they cost a whole lot more than two hundred. But again, if you're getting it as part of your Advantage plan or a part of a standalone dental plan, you're at least getting something that's going to be helpful that could reduce the costs. Do you have to go to a vendor that um, is uh, associated with this particular choice? The answer is, in many cases, yes. VSP is one of the more common carriers out there that many of you may be familiar with. So you can see the list of different kinds of enhancements and discounts that you can get. So it may not necessarily be about getting it all paid for, but it may be about getting a discount. So on the far right, uh, so um, on this screen, what you'll see is the rates. So the monthly rate on a vision plan, single, right? Um, on plan one or plan two. So here's plan one and plan two, right? Um, you know, the question is, is how much are you getting? What's the difference, right? Um, part of the difference is in some of the more expensive components of these vision coverages. Again, it's all about looking at the details that you have. Sorry. So insurance, dental insurance takeaways. I say this in every presentation I do, no matter whether it's dental or medical or prescription drugs, is that each person's dental needs in this case are unique. Uh, no two people are alike and it needs to be looked at as a standalone. It's not a group plan like you may have had with your company. These are individual needs. And the decision is really based on your planned dental use planned. It may not be something you can plan, but in some cases it is, or your sort of your, your, your comfort level or your habit around dental use and your dentist loyalty. Um, that's really important to many people because, you know, if they've been using the same dentist for 10, 20 years, the thought of changing um, is just not um, something they consider. But talk to your dentist for discounts and accepted coverages. I'm often suggesting to people, you know, I'll give you a list of five carriers, see if they take any of them. Many of them will say, I'll give you a cash discount. 
But in some cases, you are going to save money off of a dental plan. If you know you have extensive coverage, having a dental plan is certainly better than not having a dental plan. But you, just like everything else, you have to be able to afford it. There are standalone plans that I've mentioned, many of them. Um, and there are MedAdvantage plans that have riders or just embedded components, embedded benefits within the Advantage plan that you may purchase. If you're on a retirement program, what are the dental coverages and what are those details? Um, what dentist can you use and cannot use? Do you have discounts or not? But uh, these Medicare Advantage plans, more and more are offering more and more, but it's not as much as a standalone would have to offer. Um, consider your post-employment or your spouse's post-employment COBRA options and their costs. Um, people want to keep their COBRA. They want to pay whatever it is, but it's not necessarily the best coverage, but it's what they're used to and they know their dentist takes it. Uh, but it's certainly something they can transition to over time to another set of coverages that they, they control, they pay on their own. That's a standalone plan. I mean, you can have an advantage plan plus a standalone and have two types of dental coverages. But that's up to you based on the kind of plan that you have um, and what's important to you. Review your dentists closely for that, whether they're in or out of network. Um, you know, you, just like a medical office is very many billing people don't know what coverages they take or don't take. So, you know, it's important that they're clear and you're clear because when the billing comes, the billing comes. Um, some dentists will actually submit the reimbursement uh, for you, but at the very least, you need the details of the procedures that are either being estimated or being charged to you. So you need a, a detailed billing, not just, I paid $500. You need to know exactly what was done and the codes that were done so that those can be submitted to whomever it is if they're being reimbursed if, you're, if the dentist is not doing it for you. But understand your dental plan, whatever it is, and understand what you have and, and you know what the limitations are. There are exclusions, there may be waiting period, there may be you know, zero, 20, 50% of out-of-pocket. Understand it so you're not surprised. And then if you, if you feel help, it's helpful, go to this Delta Dental uh, Cost Estimator. It's one of the best, better ones that I've seen. So that's the presentation, folks. Um, I'm certainly up for questions at this time. I hope this was helpful. Um, it's an important subject and I hope you've gained some insights. All right, thank you so much, Mark. Um, we'll move on to the Q&A session now. So if anybody does have any questions, please feel free to uh, put them in the chat or the, the Q&A, we'll be happy to answer them. Or if you have a, uh, a personal question um, that you'd prefer to contact Mark directly, um, you can contact him through, uh, through Emerald Medicare and he'll be happy to, to assist. So I do see a few questions here. And one of them is, is what I've talked about today reflect retirees. I, I, the answer is absolutely yes. Retirees um, can vary in the coverage they're being offered based on their longevity with wh wherever they worked. So the dental coverage may not be the same for all retirees. So absolutely, uh, this is important, I think, for you to understand that um, what you're offering, being offered is different. You may get off, be offered nothing. On the other hand, you may be offered something and it's embedded in your plan, or you may want to enhance what you have now with something completely different um, than it, because they may not cover as much as you'd like. Were there any other questions that you saw that I can uh, help or answer? Um, I well, don't see you. I don't see any other questions coming in, but we can give it a, a few more minutes in case anybody's typing away. I know it's a lot of information.
Um, while you're waiting, maybe, um, and, and you're dealing with, uh, with, with individuals, what's the, the number one thing associated with dental that, that, that you deal with or a question that you have to answer? Um, again, I think what people, um, want is something. They want some dental coverage to limit their exposure, um, because it's the unknown. I mean, again, people's history with dental, co dental care really dictates their future decisions on in retirement. But the truth is, is that once you retire and you lose your corporate coverage and you're getting older, a lot changes. And so I encourage people to really look deep into their current medical plan to make sure that they have something. Um, and because these standalone plans are truly available at any point in time, that to consider dental coverage when they need it. Um, so there was a question, uh, when you retire, uh, you get, some people get coverage from the place. Um, does it end when you go to Medicare? The answer is no. If you have options within your retiree package that's being offered, take it, take it graciously. Um, it may not be everything you need or want, but it's something. You can always enhance it. But um, Medicare is not going to ever prevent you from getting um, uh, coverage. Uh, you have to have, in retirement, you have to have Medicare A and B. So Medicare itself doesn't cover dental. So of course, whatever dental you're given by the retiree package or whatever plan you've decided to be on um, would be an additional or um, enhanced uh, coverage. So I would say Medicare has no impact. Um, once said, how can I get detailed standalone dental plan from Emerald? Can I call? Absolutely. Like if, if you are on an advantage plan, then you do need to decide before December 7th, uh, because you would want a dental plan that is incorporated in the rest of the package, including doctors and medications. But if you um, are looking at a standalone dental plan, my only a uh, comment would be, please call after December 7th so we can handle all the folks that are uh, looking to make changes, but happy to help. Don't hesitate to call after December 7th if you're on, uh, looking at a standalone plan. Happy to help. And I, I and my, my services are free. Um, and so if you wind up getting a plan through me, that's how I get paid from the insurance company. But my services are free. There's no consultative fee at all. Um, can you briefly discuss the appeal processes? That's a great question. So in the world of care, 80% of the people never appeal. And of the people who appeal, 80% are successful. So I would never give up on an appeal. It's about being an advocate for yourself or for your loved one. And I would encourage um, appealing um, costs that don't seem right. Again, most of the time I see appeals on prescription drugs and medical care or, uh, you know, denials on, um, you know, pre-authorizations, but on, on dental coverages, um, it's certainly worth appealing because um, sometimes it's just being handled by an administrative person and they may need some more backup from the dentist. And um, sometimes uh, that will work. And I always encourage people if they have the time to, to advocate for themselves and appeal. It's a great question. I think that is everything. So um, I'd like to thank you again, Mark, for, for presenting today. Um, this program is being recorded, so a copy of the recording will be sent out um, to everybody who registered um, once it gets put up on our, on our YouTube page. So um, be on the lookout for a follow email from me that'll, that'll include the link to that. So, because there was a lot of information that was, that was shared today. Um, any closing thoughts, Mark, before we close? No, my, my comment is, is take care of your dental needs um, because everyone has them and I'll help in your general health. All right. Well, thank you so much, Mark. And thank you for everybody who attended today. Um, we hope you found it um, very informative and we uh, look forward to you at our next programs. So thank you and have a great day. Thank you. Have a great day.